generation. And so this is the idea that we're going to go and we're going to put our time, our energy, our money into bringing these ecosystems back faster than they would normally recover or to facilitate that recovery by uh, manipulating the factors of the ecosystem that are preventing the natural recovery of the corals. And in this photo, you just see here, this is a um, coral nursery and it's out away from the island a bit, um, ele elevated up off of the bottom where it's in good water quality. And you can see some of the corals that we grow on our coral nursery. So there's a few different restoration techniques that I wanna talk about. And I'm gonna stick to the techniques that are available to local managers. So, um, you know, when we talk about ecosystem management, uh, resource management, and this type of work, there's a lot of different groups. There's governments and academics and, and very well-funded groups. But what I wanna focus primarily on are, is the local level. So community level management of these ecosystems because that's as conservation diver, that's who we mostly target is the people on the ground, the people that are actually living and relying on these ecosystems. So the techniques that are available to many of them, the first one is called direct transplantation. And this is basically you go to a nice reef, you take some corals off of it, and you bring them over to a not so nice reef, and you hope that they kind of become the next generation of corals in that area, that once you have those living corals there, it stimulates the, the um, symbiotic organisms like the herbiv herbivorous fishes and things like that, the other organisms that, that make the reef happen. Um, and the idea is that the e ecosystem, you're kind of like jump-starting it. The next one is called coral gardening. Um, and coral gardening is basically going just like you would in a garden. You know, you go through, you remove some of the weeds, you pick up the corals that are broken, um, you, you put them back in, this kind of activities that just takes, you know, time and knowledge of the ecosystem. This I think is generally something that um, is best to do with local managers because you really have to know the reef at an intimate level like you would a garden in your front yard. Um, you need to know, you know the seasonality of it. You need to know all these things. Um, so it takes being there a long time. And this is a really great thing for local reef managers to be involved in people who are there every day diving on these reefs. Then we have coral gardening, plus, what I think of as coral gardening plus. Um, so this is coral gardening, um, the same type of techniques, but now you're implementing some more advanced techniques into it, such as the nursery stage, what we call the three-step coral restoration system, where you're taking corals, fragmented corals. Um, we only use corals of opportunity, which are those that are naturally broken due to fish behavior, storms, boats, divers, that kind of stuff. We don't go and fragment corals or break them ourselves. Um, so we'll go and find these fragments on the reef, and then we'll put them onto a coral nursery, um, like you saw in that last photo, where they can start to grow up and be protected, be looked after. Um, and then we can transplant them back to the natural reef or to our artificial reefs, like in this photo. This also includes the micro fragmentation technique. Um, next, we have substrate addition, so artificial reefs or stabilization. So this is when we have those rubble fields like we saw in that second photo, all those, those branching corals break apart into unstable rubble. Um, sometimes we use nets or concretes or adhesives and things like that to stabilize that rubble. And then lastly, substrate enhancement. We're actually changing the conditions of the substrate and to some degree the water itself um, with you know, the electric, um, which we talked about last week with the mineral accretion technology or algal removal. Um, there's some programs out there that just go into those macroalgal environments and start pulling algae so that those coral larvae have a place to settle down. So these are some of the main ways that local managers are restoring reefs around the world. And we're gonna talk about some of the benefits and the drawbacks to these um, before we talk about coral spawning. Um, which is another one that I haven't listed here. So this is um, from a report, and I'm going to pronounce her name wrong, I'm sure. Um, Bostrom Einerson, um, 2019, um, and she's also been working, doing some great work with coral restoration. But we can see here, um, she looked and did a literature review, found out 
kind of what techniques different people were using out there. And as we can see, the most um, popular technique here is the, um, the coral gardening technique. 48% of the projects out there are doing it, and it's quite successful. Um, and, you know, it's either just doing it um, in situ or having that nursery phase where you're using coral nurseries to improve um, the survival ship and grow them up a little bit to kind of an escape size till they're larger and then transplanting them out to the natural reef. Um, direct transplantation is another one. This is, remember, where you're taking from a donor reef and moving it to a reef that is not doing well. And that's 20% of projects. I, I personally have never used this technique. And I think that if 20% of projects are doing that, that's quite scary. Um, there was a paper by Edwards and Gomez in 2005 where they did this technique and they, uh, they did it, um, sorry, in 1995, they published their paper in 2005. What they found after 10 years was that the only difference between the donor reef and the transplanted reef was there's more dead corals in the transplanted reef. And that makes sense. I mean, it, it, you're moving corals into an area where they've already proven that they can't survive. Um, and so I, I'm this fact that 20% of projects, a fifth of all projects out there are doing this, this should really only be used in the most extreme situations, um, like in the Caribbean where they're literally, corals are going extinct. Um, I, there I could see some reason for this, but otherwise I just don't, um, I, it really perplexes me. Um, this because, I mean, you're really just taking corals from an area where they're doing well and putting them somewhere where they're gonna die. But anyways, um, so we can look at some of the other ways, artificial reefs, about 20% of projects in the world. Um, larval enhancement, only 1% of projects around the world and quite low survival rates. So we'll talk more about that. Um, and then we can see also our mineral accretion that we covered in the last talk here. So yeah, that just gives you an idea about what's out there and, and what projects people are working with. Um, and I, of course, want more people to be using this one here, the larval enhancement, um, because it's using that secondary reproductive stage, as we'll talk about in a moment. 